We're at McAllister Arboretum and joining me is Glenn Kearns, Land Maintenance Superintendent with the City of McAllister. Glenn, thanks for joining us on Oklahoma Gardening. You bet. I'd like to welcome you and your crew to McAllister and to our little arboretum here. Well, thank you very much. It's a lovely arboretum. Tell us a bit about the history, how you got started. Back in the early 80s when the tree board was first established, we decided that there was a need for a place for people to go and to see trees that would actually do good in McAllister. Mm -hmm. So we decided to start our little collection here and it has grown and grown till now we're up in several hundred different trees. So just like this, this place we're standing right here now, this is a collection of red buds. We yeah. have 22 different varieties of red buds. What are some of the interesting cultivars? I know we're standing in front of a Chinese. This variety. right here is a mm -hmm. Avondale, a Chinese uh, Circus Chinensis Avondale. Mm -hmm. This is one of my favorite red buds of this whole collection because it blooms so profusely. It will literally bloom from the ground to the very end of the, each, uh, each limb. It's that just, it's just amazing when it blooms. Absolutely. But good red bud, very tough, uh, very under, underused. It needs to be utilized even much more than it is. So. Uh, I noticed there's several with uh, some different colored foliage as well in here. Oh yes, there is variegated weepers, there is a burgundy foliage, there is gold foliage mm -hmm. in here. So uh, if you'd like, we will just walk over to one of them and Okay, we'll let's take a look at this uh, Merlot. Mm -hmm. Okay. This next red bud I'm gonna show you here is a, a product of NC State, a mm -hmm. crossbreeding program they mm -hmm. have. Dr. Denny Warner down there has come up with these red buds where he has crossed wow. the forest pansy with the uh, Oklahomas and Texas. And beautiful. this is one that, that he's came up with. It's, you've probably all heard of uh, the other orange purple one, uh, forest pansy, but forest pansy will, if, I don't know if you ever know it's not, but it'll actually leaf tatter. Yeah, yeah it, it gets a little beat up yeah. in that Oklahoma you'll notice, wind. But this, this here is in full sun, mm -hmm. south wind, and it's just marvelous. The thick leaves. Thick, yeah, the leaves are yeah. very thick. And this coloration oh, is this color is just fantastic. And it'll hold it well on up in the summer, if you'll notice it mm -hmm. goes. Now so, you have a weeping variety that also has this pretty coloration. Yes, there is a weeping form of this mm -hmm. called Ruby Falls, mm -hmm. okay? Which is the same purple foliage, but good weeping habit that we think is going to really come out and work, and work for us too. So we're really excited about these right here. Now another so, weeping one that you've been looking at here has this variegated foliage. Tell yes. me about this. Uh, this is one called white water. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now I've done see that this this red bud is going to burn in the sun. Yeah. Okay. So I can see that it's going to require some shade, but you know that's what this is all about is to test these plants and to see which one can do this or you know mm -hmm. can stand the sun or whatever. It's called white water, and it's it's another product of. Uh, North Carolina State University crossbreeding program with red buds. So this is a good, I think, you know, if I can put it in some sun, uh, some shade, I think this red bud's gonna work Let's for See it. how it works out there. Yes. We have a couple more interesting uh, specimens down this way. Yes. Kim, this is another of our variegated red buds, which I'm real proud of. And the reason I am is because this, this variegated red bud here doesn't burn up in the sun mm -hmm. like a lot of variegated red buds do. And I assume the reason it doesn't is because it has more chlorophyll, chloroform, chlorophyll in, in the blooms. I think that's probably what it is. And if you'll notice, it also, it doesn't leaf tatter and it doesn't leaf burn. It still has a nice thick leaf yeah, and Yeah, it still has coloration. a nice thick leaf. And if you'll notice, it's right out here in the hot Full sun. sun. It has no shade at all. So mm -hmm. this is going to be a good variegated red bud. Now there's one more that you showed me on the other side. Um, Talk about an interesting color. Tell me a bit about this new cultivar, Rising Sun. Okay. <laughs> a friend of mine in, in uh, Tennessee, a nurseryman named Ray Jackson, found this new red bud in his grove of this, it was just Eastern is what I understand. And this, this uh, Rising Sun uh, that they've named it is actually a sport. It just was a sport that came off of a, just a plain old mm -hmm. Circus Canandensis. So, and I'm telling you, when you see this red bud, if you've never seen it before, it's just gonna blow your socks off, all mm -hmm. right? Because I've never seen nothing like it before. Mm -hmm. It actually starts out with tangerine leaves and it gradually turns into different shades of yellow. Mm -hmm. Very vigorous tree, a very uh, thick tree, very thick canopy tree. Uh, and it layers when it, as it grows, it, it layers on top of each other. 
and this is really going to be a winner. So you guys, uh, Greenleaf Nursery yeah, and Tahlequah gonna... is the one that's going to uh, introduce this tree. So everybody be on the lookout when you see this tree because you're just going to absolutely love it. And this is going to be coming out this fall? This fall in very limited quantities. Next okay. spring there will be a number of them come out. Well All I right? can't wait to add one to the studio. <laughs> Let's you look bet. at some other collections. Sherman Miller, senior gardener with the city of McAllister. Sherman, you maintain the uh, ginkgo collection as well as many other collections That's out correct. here, but this is That's one of correct. your specialties. I love ginkgo trees. I think they're really underused. They really are, Kim. Mm -hmm. they, there's a ginkgo for everybody, mm -hmm. and ginkgos are pest resistant, they're tough. You can get them in all shapes and sizes, so mm -hmm. The, we have 19 varieties in the ground, and this fall we'll be putting out probably another nine or 10 varieties. Uh, a few of them that we have is, is like this one behind us. This is called Weeping Wonder, mm -hmm. or Mutant Weeper. It's, it's kind of a high grafted weeping type ginkgo. And explain what high grafted is for Well, viewers. they'll they'll take and graft mm -hmm. one of the dwarf varieties or another variety onto the top of a standard ginkgo. Okay. You can see where the bud was put on right down here. Yeah. Okay. But they'll graft them on top of standard ginkgo rootstock. And most of the time it's with these, the, the little dwarf ones, like the Moroccan and the, and the troll. This one here is Moroccan. Mm -hmm. It doesn't get very wide or very tall, so mm -hmm. it's, it's capable of being put in like a patio pot, a big patio pot yeah. for small gardens. And the, and the little troll here is really lush foliage. It won't get but a foot and a half tall by three feet wide. It has a beautiful it's foliage. It's really neat mm -hmm. foliage and they're, like I say, they're insect free. People don't have to worry with them very much. It's an ancient tree. Ancient it's tree. Been here a long 150 time. million years mm -hmm. old. They found them in fossils. So they can't be all bad. No. <laughs> they, gotta, they have to be good. You know, but we've got, there's a ginkgo for everybody and I just think they ought to be used a whole lot more. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You bet. Well, Sherman, the ginkgos, uh, the dwarf ginkgos, give people a lot of different options for using trees mm -hmm. in different areas of the landscape. Yeah, the same is true about these uh, columnar form or fastigiate form trees. And we have a oak here. Mm -hmm. This is a columnar English. And for people with small yards like the ginkgos, there's a lot of columnar type oaks, and mm -hmm. we have columnar sweet gums, the slender silhouette, and we've got columnar tulips, mm -hmm. columnar pines. Yeah, so so nice. for small yards, small places, you've got you've got a wide array of, of trees that you can that you can use nowadays, whereas you weren't, you know, in years past. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing a lot of new cultivars come out in yes. that prestigious yes. form because of that. There's a lot of them. We have about 12. 10 or 12 different upright oaks, you mm -hmm. know, that are the English and all that. We're kind of proud of one in particular. What's that one? That's the Kindred Spirit. Mm -hmm. It's a cross between the English and the Swamp White, okay. which makes it really tough yeah. for, you know, the urban pollution, you know, the Absolutely. compacted soils and stuff. It's really tough. So we're kind of excited about it as well as all of our other columnar plants. Certainly a great uh, landscape option. Yes, landscape options. You got to have them. I want to take a look at one more of your collections. You have a large number of bald cypress. Yes, we've got 11 different varieties of bald mm -hmm. cypress. This particular one is called the Frio bald cypress. Uh -huh. It was found in West Texas, actually by an Oklahoma, native Oklahoman, Steve Biebrick. He That's was pretty uh, surprising to find them that you know far yeah, west in Texas. Right <laughs> along the Frio River, and he noticed that it was middle of summer. It was really hot, and it it's kept its dark green foliage. You mm -hmm. don't see any brown in it, you know, like you normally do most bald cypresses in the yeah, heat of the summer. It looks wonderful. Where they'll try to shed. And this one really holds it. Uh, we've got, like I said, we've got 11 different varieties and uh, some of them are rare and unusual, twisted, contorted, and 
and different things, but uh, we've got one down here that's that we're pretty excited about. It's called the Falling Waters. It's a weeping form okay. that's, that's pretty neat. Yeah. And the mother plant is, is huge. It's tall and has a central leader that it weeps off of. And uh, the so one we have, we've, tall, then. Yeah. <laughs> and we've got it staked up right now. We really haven't turned it loose, you know, to let it really weep hard yet. Yeah. But it, it's a real pretty ball cypress. New promising uh, introduction. A new introduction, yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for sharing your collections with us. Uh, thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. I'm sure we just uh, scratched the surface here when looking at these collections. You have a wonderful arboretum. Well, thank you. But before we leave, there's a couple of unique trees I saw that I wanted to learn more about. One of these was a pair of aspens. Tell me about those. Well, you know, uh, they say that aspens won't grow in this hot climate that we're in. Well, <clears throat> J. Frank Smith Nursery in Boring, Oregon has found a grove of aspen in the sand hills of Nebraska, believe it or not. It's just an isolated stand that they have found there. And that's and, another uh, really hot yeah. climate like we have Oh yes, here. very hot, mm -hmm. very windswept. And the ones we have right now so far has not leaf tattered, not leaf scalded at all. So I really, and it had that beautiful yellow fall color. How long they've been in the ground? This is the second year. Okay. okay. We'll have to see how well they do. Uh, you bet. Watch them over the years. You bet. Another one I was interested in is this really beautiful river birch. It's uh, yeah. nice and compact. Yes, mm -hmm. this is a selection called Little King. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I, I've heard that the mother plant is only about 12 or 14 foot tall. And this would be an excellent tree to put in a restricted landscape. Because mm -hmm. landscapes nowadays are, they're actually they're getting, sizing down. And the plants are, you know, so people are, the uh, nurseries are looking for smaller plants. And this would be a good plant right here to use in a small restricted uh, landscape. Absolutely, well, I love what you're doing down here. It's a wonderful resource for the community and for all of us across Oklahoma to learn more about yeah. what trees will be successful for yeah. us. I'd like to thank you guys for coming down, you and your crew, and you're more than welcome anytime to come down. And I'd like to also invite the people from across Oklahoma to come here to McAllister and Sierra and Arboretum. And also they can go to Cribs and have some good Italian food. <laughs> I think right. we'll head there next. <laughs> there you go. That's a good Thank idea. Thank you so much. All right. All right. <laughs>